Amen. Good being here. Good being here. They, uh, I got a text message at like 8.20 last night. And they're like, hey, you have to be at work tomorrow. And I'm like, nah, not so much. Be quiet. I ain't going to work. So it's good to be here. Um, yeah, it's good to be here. I uh, had someone schedule me for some stuff, and I told them, nope, not going to happen. So here I am. It's a blessing. Blessing to be here. I'd much rather be here than uh, what they had me doing, which was a bunch of nonsense. Um, but it's a blessing to be here. It really is. So, anybody else have a blessing for the week? Blessings? No? Yes, sir. Did anybody talk to you afterwards about anything? Or? Uh, a couple of guys said, oh, thank you very much. That was good. The man that was making cheese said, well, I'm going to try to remember that. So, good. Good feedback. No negative feedback. Good. That's a blessing. That is a blessing. All right. Yeah, it was a, for those in the exercise, it was a long week. It was a busy week. Um, it was, but it was a good week. We got, we got through it. Uh, got to hang out a little bit. Oh, recover a little bit yesterday. Do some studying. Got to uh, play some golf with Brother Day and with Taylor, and uh, worked on my lesson yesterday. It was a good day yesterday. Uh, I'm excited about it. This is I, I, I so I got my plane tickets. I leave uh, the second of November. I will final out of the base on the 29th of October. So it's right around the corner. So with that being said, if I'm not mistaken, this is probably my last Sunday school lesson. And then uh, I think Brother Taylor's got next week, right? You should probably communicate with him. I asked him that question this morning, and we have two different answers. Okay. Yep. Last week he told me he was taking over next week, so we'll see. All righty. Um, so, yeah, I'm getting close to the end, but it's been a blessing. All right. So we're going to continue on uh, where, we, where we left off last week in Ephesians, chapter number 6. Uh, we've been talking about putting on different things. We talked about after salvation, what comes next. Um, and we're finally to the part of putting on Christ. And we're talking about putting on all these different things. And we came to Ephesians chapter number 6 and verse number 10, where it talks about uh, putting on the armor of the Lord. Um, I don't know we're going to get, we're not going to get very deep into the actual armor portion of it, just the everything else going on around it, because there's so much, so many blessings that go on into it. Um, I'm going to read the first few verses and we'll pray that we'll get into it. Ephesians 6 verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be that ye may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, uh, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly 
to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, uh, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Let's go and pray that we'll get into the lesson. Dear God, thank you for letting us be here. I always pray that you will just let us just uh, look at your word, dear Lord, and be encouraged by it. Just to be, uh, just to see what the Christian life is, dear God. I always pray to help us just to grow into the the, uh, the the Christian that we need to be, dear Lord, as it's depicted here. I always pray that you will uh, be with the services today. Pray that you'll be with the pastor as he brings the message later. Help me say what I need to say this morning and not, nothing else. Mm-hmm. And it uh, gives clarity of thought. Thank you for all that you've done. Just Amen. Amen. All right. So we've, we've talked about how that there's been this growth. We, we mentioned a few weeks ago uh, that uh, we start off as babes who need the milk. Then we talked about how that we are no longer children tossed. Uh, we talked about how that now he, he, he talks about us being a Christian soldier, uh, a mature Christian soldier. Um, you know, it, it, that's where we need to be. We need to be to the point where we are soldiers. Something when I read this, what I envision is uh, a one, almost like a one-on-one combat. When you get when you get out there and you're fighting, and you're and you're fighting uh, as a soldier. Back in those days, it's, this uh, they were talking about the the armor and the sword and the hand-to-hand combat that was going on. They were really in the fight next to their enemy, fighting sword by sword, uh, toe to toe with whoever they're fighting against. They're really getting down and dirty, fighting their enemies, um, and. I just imagine just uh, the soldiers of those days doing that, and today we we still end up in hand-to-hand combat. Um, I've had the honor and privilege of working with some very special people, and they've had to go in and do little hand-to-hand combat even today. And they, the, hearing them talk about that, um, it, it 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 it's a different type of warfare, and we need to be to the point where we are standing and fighting and warring against the devil and those things. We need to have that, that mentality as soldiers, as warriors. We aren't called to be uh, Christians that just kind of sit and don't do anything like bumps on a log or toads. We're supposed to be warring individuals. We are warriors for Christ. We are soldiers for the king. He is our, 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 he is our king that we serve, and we want to serve him gladly for all that he's done. We talked about Romans 12. A while back, and uh, how that it is—it's our reasonable service to want to serve Him. It is our reasonable service to give Him our life, and because of what He has done for us, that causes us to want to be soldiers for Him. And we know we have a cause; we have a reason to fight. We uh, we we think about what Christ has done for us. What does that provoke us to? Good works and loyalty and love, and to want to war for Christ because of what He has done for us. Um, and it provokes us to be good soldiers, good servants for Christ. We need to be willing to work for Christ, love for Christ, stand for Christ, war for Christ. We are warriors. We don't see that sometimes. We don't envision sometimes as Christians as being um, turn the other cheek and meek and mild, which is true, but we are a warrior as well. We are to stand. We are to fight. It says it multiple times here in verse number uh, 13 and 14, Having done to do, uh, having done all to stand, stand. Therefore, it's not backing down. It's moving forward. It's progressing. It's never stopping. It's always moving forward towards the enemy. It's always fighting. That's something that uh, uh, that is. Uh, if you look down through the history of the United States military as a general rule, in the absence of orders, what do the Americans have a tendency to do? Move forward. We get it more aggressive. You lose, uh, orders don't come down from somebody. What do we do? We have tendency just to attack no matter what. Hey, that's that's basically what he's saying here. Keep moving forward. Don't stop. If you look through all this armor, there's nothing for the, your back plate. There's nothing to protect your back. There's literally nothing. Why? Because it's just like that American flag that we put on our shoulders with the stripes uh, and, the, and the, with the stars and stripes, stars pointing forward. Why? Because we're going forward to the battle. We're not running. We as Christian soldiers are going towards the enemy. We're fighting. We're challenging the devil. We are going against him. We are never running, never cowering, never getting giving up. That's not who we are. We are soldiers. What does it say? We talked a little bit last week. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We have all these things. 
It's not in the power of Will Cooper's might. It's not in the power of what's going on. It's not in the power of who you are. It is the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is His power. It is His armor. Well, as we go through here, we're going to notice that this this armor is prepared for us. We're, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. Um, the flesh will fail us. It will fail us. I can't do things to honor Christ of myself. I have to do it in the power of His might. I have to do what He wants us to do. Um, I'm going to run over real quick to uh, 2 Timothy chapter number 1. Come on, Cooper. Uh, 2 Timothy 1.7. And it says... Uh, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Hey, the, what does the Holy Spirit give us through the Lord? What does the Lord Jesus Christ give us through the Holy Spirit? Power. We're not fear. We're not scared of what's going to happen to us. We have that. We have a spirit of power, and we're not have. A, we don't have a spirit of fear. We're not scared of the devil. We're not scared of the world. Why? Because the Holy Spirit gives us that power. That, that we know we can rest upon the promises of God. We can stand in Christ complete. We know that in the end, we win. Why? Because Christ wins. God wins. We, are, we have to make sure we are standing on Christ on God's side. We are fighting for Christ. We're fighting with Christ. We are pulling. We are, we're on his side. And in the end, we win no matter what. Don't be scared if you're going to win or lose. You will be victorious. Um, if you are putting on the whole armor of Christ, you will win. You cannot lose. We might stumble. We might fall. Um, you know, we might be in a fight, and the devil might land a couple punches, but in the end, he's going to lose. We might be knocked down a couple of times. It says over in Proverbs that uh, a just man rises seven times. Mm -hmm. Hey, we get back up. We never quit. We don't stop. You know, as, as a Christian, we don't, we, we're not perfect. We make mistakes. I make mistakes on a daily basis. I'm going to lose those small battles occasionally. What? What am I going? To, what do we need to do? Put the armor of Christ back on and keep fighting. Don't stop. Stand. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in His power of His might. It's in Him. It's not in me. What does it say in verse number eleven? Put on the whole, not just a little bit of the armor, not just the shield, but the whole armor. It says that in verse 11 and then verse 13 as well. It says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor. Why does it say whole? Why, why, does, why does it say the whole armor of God right there? Why? They may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The devil's been at this a while. He's been fighting the Christians. He's been, been fighting um, the, God's people for as long as we've been around. He's, been, he's, had, he's had thousands of years of practice. He's been going after it. It says wiles here. If you look it up, um, those wiles, it means uh, the, he has a, he's cunning, he's tricky, he's deceitful, he's a, he's a strategist. He's, he has strategy behind it. He knows, he's planning before the steps of, uh, ahead of you. He's, a, he's ahead of us. He's strategizing how to get to us. Hey, if we don't have the whole armor of God on, he's going to get us every time. He is. Yeah, he's going to find that one part that's weak. We might have be really solid and, and have, we have one set of armor on that he can't get us through the shield maybe. Maybe that shield's really, really good. Hey, but we don't have our feet shod with the preparation of peace, gospel of peace. Maybe we don't have that on and that's what gets us. And maybe it might, it might be the breastplate of righteousness. Man, we got that shield of faith, but we're not living a righteous life. He can get us there. Hey, we need to make sure we have the whole armor of God on. Why? The devil's, he's, he's pretty wily. He's pretty, I, I, I don't know if, I'm just crazy American here, but the uh, the wily coyote, right? Ever seen him? He comes up with all these crazy ideas, catches that road runner. Um, that's, that's the devil. He's always trying to come up with a new way of getting us. He's, he's had these ways that have worked for thousands of years. He has all these cunning and deceitful ways to get at Christians. Why do we need to do this? Why do we need to put on the whole armor of God? Why do we need to stand in the power of God? Because the devil is cunning. He's, he's smart. He really is. He knows you and I. He knows what's going to get us. He knows our weaknesses. And he's going to find a way to get to our weaknesses to make us fail, to make us fall, to make us feel, uh, make, to make us feel as though we can't fight for Christ anymore. 
He's going to find a way to get to you and I and make us feel defeated. But how do we keep, what do we do? Lord, I'm sorry. What do we have to do? Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's something we have to do. It's not something that just automatically happens. We have to, have to consciously put on. When I was getting ready this morning, I had to look at, look at my closet and say, well, I've got two shirts and two pairs of pants. Which one am I wearing today? I had to put it on purposely. I had to look down. Oh, this button goes in this hole. It was a conscious decision. We have to put on the whole armor of Christ. We have to make that conscious decision to put it on. That daily decision, I'm going to live for Christ. That daily decision to say, I'm going to follow the Holy Spirit and I'm going to learn the Bible. I'm going to study the Bible. I'm going to consciously have a peaceful life. I'm consciously going to stand for Christ. It's a conscious decision. We have to put on the whole armor. Whole armor. You know, we've got to stand. We talked about it a little bit last week. We've got to stand for Christ. Whatever it is that we're called to do, whatever it is that we're doing, uh, whether it, it be the pastor, whether it be just a, a husband or a wife or a Sunday school teacher or a song leader or uh, just your work, you know, being a good employee uh, and being a witness at work, we need to stand for Christ. Stand. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't fall down and just stay down. We fall down. We trip. We fall. Uh, the devil will land punches on us, but we get back up. We don't quit. Don't quit. We keep going. We don't stop. Why? We're standing in the power of His might. We're standing for Christ. We're putting on the armor of God, and we're warring daily. It's not an easy thing. This is not a, a quick battle. This is a marathon, not a sprint. This is a lifelong war. This is something that's going to go on for until God calls us home. We can't just go out there and just think that we're going to have the whole thing uh, conquered. We're not going to conquer the flesh in one day or in one week or one month. No, this is a lifelong journey. This is, this is for all of our life. We're going to be fighting the devil till the day we die. We're going to be fighting our flesh. We're going to be fighting. We have to die to ourselves and live to Christ daily. We've talked about that. How that we're supposed to be putting on that armor of light and shining for Christ. Why? Daily. We're supposed to be submitting to His will. Daily. This is what we are called to do. Follow the, whole, follow the Holy Spirit daily. This is a daily battle. Some days are easier than others. Some days... We, can, we have the Holy Spirit to guide us, and we maybe we don't get it as attacked as some days. Some days it might be right right in front of our face, and we're literally going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. We are literally uh, fighting daily just to get through the day. Some days it's easy. Hey, but we have to be ready. We have to be ready. We have to have that whole armor of God on so that we can catch the devil in his wiles and his deceitful trickery. If we don't have the Holy Spirit guiding us, if we're not living and having the whole armor of God, we're not going to be able to go through our daily battles. We're not going to be able to, to catch the devil because you know why? If we don't have the whole armor of God and we're not standing in his, in his power of his might, we're going to be doing it on our own. God knows the devil. He knows his he knows his uh, his tricks. He knows how to defeat him. And if we're living in the power of his might, he's going to be guiding us and telling us, "Hey, watch out! Look what's right around the corner. The devil's trying to trip you up." He is going to be the one giving us wisdom and guidance and know how. Uh, if we look down a little bit further, it talks about the the Holy Spirit, which is the Word, um, the sword. We're going to know how to combat the devil. Why? Because the Holy Spirit's going to be guiding us. It's going to be directing us. It's going to be bringing the scriptures to our mind. It's going to be showing us how to fight the devil. Uh, if we look at Jesus, when he was combating the devil, when the devil was tempting him, what did he do? He used scriptures. He said, hey, uh, it's not that man should not live by bread alone. Hey, don't tempt the Lord your God. Hey, he was going through and he was quoting scripture. Holy Spirit was guiding them in, those, in that. We need to have the Holy Spirit to guide us in our sword of the, of the Word of God. We need to be putting on that whole armor of Christ to be able to defeat the devil. Um, you know, it, like I said, there's, there's, we might not, we might have to work at certain pieces. 
some things come naturally for some people. Some of this armor is easier for other people to put on than, than, than me. Some of it might be harder for you than, than what's easy for me. Maybe you, we struggle with faith. Maybe we struggle, the people who struggle with maybe their salvation. Maybe there's people who struggle with the peace part of the, having their feet shod preparation of the gospel of peace. Uh, whatever it might be, we need to make sure. Maybe it's knowing the scriptures, you know, the way that we should, knowing how to use the scriptures. We need to make sure that we are working to put on the whole armor of God so that we can defeat the devil. Because he is going to be after us. He's going to be trying to find a way to, to trip us up. You know, something that it mentions here that uh, we have to be reminded sometimes. In verse number uh, 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, it's one of those things to where when unsaved people act like unsaved people, don't be surprised. What are they doing? They're, they're, they're doing what they know to do. They're, they're, they're going after the things that they enjoy. The flesh does what the flesh wants to do. They're, the mentality of most are going to be eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we must die. That's basically what it is. We're trying to do the best that we can to have fun right now because at the end of it, there's nothing else left. They're, try, they're going after those things. What feels good is what they're going to want to do. They're going to follow after the flesh. And you know what? The devil's going to be right there leading them along. He's going to be setting them up in the ways that he wants to. He's going to be having them war against, the, against us. It's literally a war, good versus evil, light versus dark. That's literally what it is. The devil is guiding this world in the world's systems to where he wants. He's going to be putting those people, what did he talk about? The rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual weakness in high places. The devil's going to be doing the best the most impact as he can in different places. The people are just following after their own lusts. They're not trying to do what God wants. Why? Because people are uh, unsaved people are unre unregenerated. They're not living after Christ. They're living after themselves. You know, we've talked about how even as Christians, we have a tendency to want to rationalize our sins. And that's us trying to do what is, that's, that's, that's us Christians. And we know that we're not supposed to, and we still do it. So much so that people who aren't saved, they can rationalize anything. That's how you get an entire country brainwashed and them killing Jews. That's how you get people to murder babies, in, like in the United States right now. Why? They're rationalizing their own stuff, their own sins. What are they doing? The, 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 the devil is pushing an agenda, and they're following it because it falls right in line with what their flesh wants to do. It makes them feel good, and they're just chasing that. Hey, we fight a flesh, and we, we fight a war, not just against flesh and bone. It's against ideologies and spiritual darkness. That's what it is. If it was if it was flesh and bone, you could you know mount a war and go try to conquer it. It's not. It's an ideology. It's, it is the spiritual war against people who are unsaved versus people who are saved. It's the Holy Spirit against the devil. It's God against the devil. That's what it is. So sometimes when we have people that we work with or people that we know or we look and we see in the world around us all the wickedness and evil that's going on um it's not them it's the devil working through them it's their flesh working through them it is and we talked about how that in the bible says that inside of me there is nothing good hey why they're just acting, they're just following after the, their their selves hate the sin love the people that's what it, that's literally what it is hey they they're not being wicked individual people because that's who they want to be, it's who they were born, how they're born, that's who they are. They don't have the Holy Spirit living inside of them, telling them to promote, uh, provoking them to good works. That's not who they are. The devil's driving the world to fight against you and I. He is guiding it. He is directing it, that part. In the end, though, you, you know, I'm, I'm not a huge uh, uh, in time type of person, but you look at the end, he, he, the devil gets the entire world to fight Christ there at the end. He gets it. That's what he does. He's, he's trying to build his kingdom so that he can try and be, it's, it's a futile attempt. It's not going to happen. We've read, we know in the end that Christ wins. Um, but he's trying to do that. Hey, we fight against the devil daily. Daily. Hey, this is who we're fighting against. Like I said, 
don't get angry with people and try to fight them physically. It doesn't do, it doesn't, it's not going to do any good. Why? What is it? It is a spiritual battle. If we look at all these things that are mentioned, it's not literally us going out there and wielding a sword and a, and a shield. No, it's how we act. It's how we conduct our lives. It's how we, how we go about our lives and, and honor and glorify God. That's what it is. Our daily battle, our warring is in a spiritual sense. That's what we do. It's what we are. We are warriors for Christ spiritually. And we have to stand up and fight against the devil and what he says. We are salt. We are that light. We are called to be that light that's set on a hill. We are to reflect the light of Christ to the world around us so that they see their wickedness and they understand what's going on and they look to Christ to be saved. That is what we do. That is who we are. We are warriors for Christ to shed his light. We are to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and to shine that light to the world around us. We are to stand for what is right. To having done all, stand. Having done all, stand. Put on the armor of Christ. Hey, it, it, when we look at it, it says put on Christ. We are to be that light. We are to be that salt. We are to preserve the world around us. We are to make people thirsty for Christ. We are to show shine light in the darkness so that they can see their their evilness and want to say, man, I need to be fixed. I need to be, I need to get out of my wickedness. Why? What, how do I do that? The Lord Jesus Christ. That is what we are called to do. We are called to stand. We are called to stand. It's not the people, like I said. It's not the people. It's the sin that we're fighting. It's the sin that people have inside of them. It's the, it's the, the it's, it's not that we're trying to argue and fight against an individual. We're fighting against the devil. We have to fight the devil in our daily, daily lives. It's not just the people. It's also the way he, uh, well, the way that we have to fight against our own flesh. We have to fight. We have to submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit and to putting on the whole armor of God, so that we can be good soldiers and loyal soldiers. We have to fight, even that within ourselves. Even that within ourselves, not just the world around us, but within ourselves. Because inside of us is nothing good. We have to understand that we're going to stand in his power, in his might, in his righteousness, in his love, in his truth. We have to stand everything through Christ. Not me. Not you. In Christ. We have to stand and fight. It's not easy. You think about the back in the day, standing. You were literally going toe-to-toe. If we're going to try and stand toe to toe against the devil, we have to have we have to have the we have to have the Holy Spirit's guidance and the and the, and the power of, and the might of Christ. If we're going to go toe to toe with the devil or any of his minions that are going to be fighting against us, we have to have his power, his might, his wisdom, his grace, his mercy. Nothing of us. It's all about Christ. We are reflecting Christ because you know what at the. At the name of Jesus, everybody's going to bow. At the name of Jesus, uh, people flee. I think about all the times that uh, the, that uh, Jesus shows up and the demons, uh, the, the people who are possessed with demons, they just look at Jesus like, Lord, don't hurt us. Don't kill us now. Hey, what is it? They're scared of the Lord Jesus Christ. They know what power that demands. I mean, they know how much uh, they need to respect him. They know that in the end, he is in charge of everything. It's not. If we look at there were, there were times when people were trying to cast out demons, and they, they they said, "Paul, I know. Christ, I know. You, I don't know." But it says that multiple times when people are trying to do things in their own might, it never works. But when people were standing in the power of Christ, in the power of His might, in the Word of God, they were able to do amazing things. Why? Because they're focused on Christ. We need to be focused on Christ, putting on the armor of God, and we can do so much more than we are capable of. We aren't that great. I'm not that special. There's nothing special about me. There's nothing special about you, except what Christ can do through us. That's what we have to understand. Um, people who have done great things for Christ, we look through um, uh, the, the great uh, preachers and pastors that, are go, that have lived in the years past and maybe uh, that are currently alive, we're like, man, that's a great person. But what we have to be saying is, man, God's great to work through him. They're submitted to Christ. They, God has done great things through them. They're, it's not them. And they're going to fail. They're going to make mistakes. It is, man, God is being, they are allowing God to use them mightily. That's what we need to see. 
we too can be great soldiers, great warriors for Christ, if we stand in the power of His might. Stand, consistent, never quitting, never stopping. Even though we get knocked down, we stand back up and we fight. It's okay. Get knocked down, stand up. Fight in the power of His might. Stand. That's what we need to do. Stand for Christ. Learn the Scriptures. Why? What does it say uh, in, ver in verse number 17? And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, knowing how we're, we talked about putting on and following the Holy Spirit, and it's going to guide us to grow. It's taken us from being babes in Christ to being warriors in Christ. Hey, it's going to guide us. It's going to mature us. It's going to show us how to use the Word of God to fight against the devil. It's going to show us how that we can have that faith. How that we can look through as a pastor who just finished up over in Romans 4. How that, how that Abraham had that faith. And he was counted as righteousness to him. How that through faith he was able to do so much. What is it? We need to have the faith. We need to look to the past so we can have, have confidence and faith for the future. We need to look at the scriptures and learn from them. Hey, what did the devil do in this day? How that Jericho, uh, where they had this mighty, mighty battle. God was God worked mightily, and they conquered this supernatural uh, conquering of a city, where the walls literally fall flat, and they they followed Christ's uh, and what God wanted in the battle plan, and they won it. But what happened next? Sin crept in, and they lost thirty six men to a simple little city called Ai. What happened there? Hey, don't don't get confidence in what Christ has done, but you take the glory for yourself. You stumble up the little things. We look to the past. We see in the scriptures where Christ has done great things, and we learn. So when we get through, and we have these great battles that we get through, we can look and say, hey, AI followed Jericho. Why? Because they got prideful and confident in themselves and took up the accursed things. They didn't work quite as good as they thought they were. We need to learn from those mistakes. We can look in the Bible and see where in Proverbs, all these daily knowledge, all this godly wisdom to get through daily, daily tasks. We're looking through scriptures and we're seeing where, uh, uh, it, how God uses the most random people. A harlot, Rahab, God used her. God uses all these people. How we're not supposed to look down on other people. Hey, just because they, they're not like you and I, God can use anybody. God can save anybody. God, it, God can do so much. When we look through the scriptures and the Holy Spirit starts guiding us, we can use it and learn how to fight the devil. To war against the devil. To war against the flesh. Because that's who we call, are called to be. Warriors. We're called to be Warriors. Not idle Christians who sit here and get fed on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. That's not who we're called to be. Not fat Baptists, but to be warriors. That's who we are a lot of times. A lot of times I, it, you, we, we see and we get, we get complacent Christianity where we just sit in here and we learn. We are, we're, the pastor brings an amazing message and we say, that's great. And we walk out unchanged. Un, 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 no desire to fight for Christ that week. Unrecharged. Just, just mediocre. Why? We are called to fight. We are called to war. We are here. This is our battle cry. This is where we come to get rejuvenated. We come together. Why? So that we can go out and fight against the war. The war against the flesh, the spirit, uh, our, our, the, our flesh, and the devil. In the world systems. That's why we come here. We come rejuvenated so we can go out. So we can encourage each other in the word. Stand. Fight. One day, when it's all said and done, I want to be able to stand before Christ. And he looks at me and says, Well done, a good and faithful servant. I want that. You know, um, where uh, the... the, the uh, uh, oh, the word you said, the parable of Jesus, when, uh, of the, the man. He gives different talents. He comes back and he says, what did, you, what did you do? Oh, I've doubled it. Oh, I've doubled it. Oh, I, I knew that you're a hard taskmaster. And uh, so I just buried it. Don't bury Christ. Don't bury Christ. Live for Christ. You know, do, as, do the best you can for Christ. Work for Christ. 
witness for Christ, so that we can see a, a, an increase for, the, for God's kingdom. So that he, when we get back and he says, well done, hey, you've been faithful with what I've given you, I can give you more. Live and fight for Christ. War for Christ. Stand for Christ. I struggle with that at times at work. Where we, we want to be timid Christians, but we're not called to be timid. I, as Will Cooper, am a timid individual. I don't like confrontation. I battle that on a daily basis. So when someone says something, standing up and saying, no, that's not what we do. That's not where we go. We should, say, we should stand up and war for Christ. Be salty. Be salty. Be that light set on a hill. We need to be, have that, that desire. We need to be that, that Christian. We, want, we should want to have that desire to do it. You know, and when we're going through all these temptations and all these struggles, I brought a message not too long ago about James chapter number uh, 1. I'm going to run over there real quick. And what does it say? It says, verse number 2, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, uh, let him ask of God that gives all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But let him in ask in faith nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Hey, when we're called and we're in the middle of that battle, when we're fighting Christ, and we're fighting the, or the devil, and we're trying to rely on Christ, and we're growing, we're falling, what happens? Be patient. You're, you're in temptations. Temptations is where you're growing. You're becoming a warrior. You're becoming a fighter. And when, you, when you're tempted, hey, you're growing. If you have patience through it, and you get through it, what's going to happen? Hey, I went through this. I'm stronger. I'm better. Christ has done me. I can look at that and I can be a better Christian for Christ because I've gone through these temptations. I have gone through these struggles. I am better for it. Hey, what does it say that when it's all done? But let patience have her perfect work, her maturing work, that ye may be mature. It says perfect. That's what it is. That's what it's talking about here is a mature and entire wanting nothing. When you want to fight, what do you do? You know, I, I've taken a few, a few fighting classes. What is it? Man... If you're not looking for that, that left hook, you're not looking for that little kick that's coming, you get laid out sometimes. You do. You get laid out. What happens next time? Okay, um, last time, they faked with the left to swung with the right. I know to pay attention. You know what? That's what we do. We get knocked down. What does it say? It's that perfecting. It's that perfecting. It's even though we're going through the trials, we might fall. What happens? We stand back up like, well, I can get through next time. I know what's going to happen next. You know, like I said, we're looking at the Jericho that calls the AIs. We're going through, we're saying, Lord, and I remember last time this happened, and I was tempted to sin, so I'm looking for it. I, I failed then, but I'm, I know to look for it this time. And we keep struggling, we keep pushing through. Why? So that we can be mature Christians, not leaving anything behind. Um, the last little bit I'm going to hit, and then we're going to be done for today, is this is a if you want to look at all the things that are mentioned in Ephesians and what we're putting on, let's go ahead and just read them. Standing therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, righteousness, uh, having truth and having the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all fiery darts of the wicked, and the helmet of salvation, and the sword of spirit, which is the word of God. Um, it goes through all these it is, it's a blessing to look, and if we scoot on over to Galatians, we were there a couple weeks ago as well, chapter number 5, look down to what the fruit of the Spirit is in verse number 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, that was mentioned, joy, peace, that was mentioned, uh, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, that was mentioned, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law, and they that are uh, Christ our Christ, have crucified the flesh with, a, with a, affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, that's mentioned. Let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be uh, desirous of vainglorious, provoking one another, envying one another. He's basically reiterating everything from Galatians chapter number 5, saying each one of these, the fruit of the Spirit, 
is going to be fulfilled in, in, the, in the armor of Christ. This armor, I didn't write, I only got two minutes, but anyways, if you look at this armor, it is crafted by the master craftsman, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. It is perfect. It is, there's, it's impenetrable, impregnable. It, there's no way you think that the devil can penetrate this armor. It is completely all-sufficient, perfect for you and I. It can't be defeated. It is a sword that cannot be broken. It is a sword that cannot be destroyed. It cuts through anything. It is the perfect weapon. We just have to know how to put it on. We have to know how to use it. It's there for us. When we fall, it's because we're not actual, we're not using the armor. We're not using the, the, the shield or the sword. We're not using it properly. We're not understanding. We're not submitting it and putting on the armor of Christ. It is perfect. When we are completely clothed in the armor of Christ, we can't be hurt. We are invincible. We are invincible as Christians. As long as we have put on this armor that is made by Christ, we are invincible. We cannot be conquered because of Christ. When we put him on, we are untouchable. We, are un, we cannot be defeated if we're put on the Lord Jesus Christ. If we're putting on the armor of Christ, we can't fail. The wiles of the devil can't deceive you because you're, you're being told by the Holy Spirit what's coming next. You have been able to, to mature and grow. And what does it talk through there? To be a better Christian. Why? Because God. Not because of you. Not because of me, there's nothing good in us. What is good about us? That armor, which is Christ. We can't even stand in the armor by ourselves. Why? Because we have to have the might of Christ to stand. It's all about Christ. It's all about His glory. It's all about His honor. It's all about standing for Him and shining as that true shining uh, soldier, that shining knight to point people to the cross of Calvary so that they can be saved and glorify Christ. And spend an eternity with Him and serve Him, not us. That's why we're supposed to stand. Stand on that hill. All right, that's all I've got for today. Let's uh, pray and we'll be dismissed. Dear God, thank you for your scripture. Thank you for what it means to us. Dear Lord, it's been a blessing to be able to study through um, you dying on the cross for us, you being raised from the grave. You saving us, you sanctifying us, you bringing regeneration into our lives so that we want to serve you. Lord, it's been a blessing to see that you provide the armor, you provide the wisdom, you provide the maturity. It's all about you, Lord. Thank you for that. Thank you for what you do for us. Thank you for all that you've done. Help us to after all that we've done, just to stand in the power of your might for you. Not for us, but for you. Help us stand. Help us go out this week and be warriors for you. I also pray that you will be a pastor as he uh, brings the message today. Pray that we'll pay attention. Mm-hmm. We'll take it. And we won't be uh, the, the, the lazy Christians, but we'll take it and apply it. And that we will stand. Thank you for all that you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.